Uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, for inviting, uh, inviting me for giving lecture here. I'm very uh, honored. Thank you. Um, and so um, my topic today is for the water waste problem uh, with, I mean, with surface tension first and then with contact angles. Uh, and this is, um, I mean, most of the uh, topic, um, most of the lecture uh, is from the joint work with Chao Wang. And I will first uh, uh, introduce some uh, classical results with uh, uh, local uh, postures uh, for the water waste problem. Of course, uh, my topic today is about the local well postures result only for water waves. And then I will uh, introduce some long smooth theory and then uh, I will uh, introduce our results. And uh, I'm sorry, in fact, um, my lecture has been uh, given uh, repeatedly many times and every time I will add something new uh, but uh, at this time I will repeat some old results again I mean uh, because our research I mean for this project starts uh, in 2014 and so there are some old results but in order to make this uh, lecture complete I have to repeat from the beginning Okay, uh, the water wave system, uh, first of all, I need to uh, show you the pictures here. I mean, uh, we have a free surface here. It's like the uh, half uh, plane or the uh, half, I mean, the half space in RD, uh, RP, uh, D plus one. I mean, horizontally you have X here and uh, vertically you have Z coordinates here. And here we have the gravity here. And gravity is a free surface, I mean, moving with uh, fluid. And the uh, fluid is, uh, I mean, you can see here, uh, it's uh, Euler equations. The first is the momentum equation and the V is the velocity and P is the pressure, G is the gravity and with inc uh, incompressibility and uh, in rotational assumption here. So there is no vorticity uh, in my lecture. And the third line is about the pressure uh, uh, con condition on the free surface with surface tension or without surface tension. And our uh, research is focusing on the case with surface tension and uh, of course, uh, Domain Zag and uh, David Nan, uh, their uh, researchers are uh, focusing on the case with, without uh, uh, surface tension, I mean. They have been uh, talked about uh, uh, um, results before, I mean, I will just repeat uh, the uh, equation here. Okay, and the third uh, and, uh, and the fourth condition is the kinematic condition and I just wrote it in this form. Uh, the derivative, the material derivative is, is tangent to the free surface. And um, you can see it in some other equivalent forms. I mean, uh, this kinetic, uh, uh, kinematic equation uh, means that the fluid particle uh, flows along the free surface. Okay, so I use um, uh, material derivative here. And, and uh, kappa, I'm sorry, kappa is the mean curvature of the free surface. Uh, so the free surface is uh, like this one, I mean, especially uh, for David Nam's case, uh, for the uh, strip domain with the free upper surface and uh, fixed lower bottom. And also uh, for some other uh, people working uh, on this case, uh, bounded 2D or 3D or any n-dimensional domain uh, with uh, free surface like this and bounded. And I mean, all these graphs uh, I, uh, I draw here is about the uh, smooth boundary case. Okay, uh, so they are uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, classical local well posted results for this kind of domains. I just show some of them, okay. And I will recall these results very soon. And when there is no surface tension, for example, in, in David Nath's uh, 
research, I mean, uh, uh, in uh, Davina's results about the local web hosts uh, for the what wave problem in a stream domain like this. And um, uh, he uh, has a Taylor science condition on the free surface, okay, uh, and it's uh, a loma derivative of pressure and with minus sign is strictly positive. And um, firstly, uh, Sidri Wu proved that this holds, I mean, sorry, sorry for that. And this holds uh, for, 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 the, uh, for the 2D half plane case and she proves it. I mean, she proved that holds. And, and, and then David Nan showed that it also holds for this case. And I guess most of the time we don't have to assume, we, we don't need to assume that the Taylor side condition holds. And it can be proved. Uh, I'm sorry? What is the orientation of uh, sorry, N is the unit outward Lomo derivative, so I should draw it here, I'm sorry. Okay. N or as I, I, I write NT, NT is a Lomo vector, sorry. That. So that's a case for the, uh, I mean for a case without surface tension. And now I will recall um, classical, some classical formulations, and I, and I only list three of them. And the first of all is uh, very famous, uh, Zakharov Craig Solomon formulation, uh, which uh, is established uh, by Zakharov Craig Solomon and um, uh, David Land uh, used in his famous paper uh, this formulation and he proved the uh, local well post uh, for this strip domain case. Of course, it's um, uh, n dimensional, I mean, uh, horizontally n dimension. And uh, the local web host is without surface tension and he uses this formulation. Uh, you see here uh, G is a uh, Dirichlet Norman operator, which is already introduced by uh, Doma Alzac in his lectures. And of course, there are a series of uh, works by uh, Doma Alzac, Biu Kizuni, and the uh, work on the um, uh, local posters of this system, also uh, with or without uh, uh, surface tension, and also uh, the uh, study on the low regularity case. So this system is highly nonlinear, I mean, this is a, a full system, I mean, full nonlinear system uh, for the Euler uh, equations. And legs, uh, that it's a Lagrangian formulation, and, um, and there are some uh, classical works uh, by, for example, uh, Lamlov, Yoshihara, and uh, also used by Wu, of course, uh, she used uh, Riemann mapping, and here is her formulation, but I will introduce uh, right now. And there is also a very famous one, I mean, f famous uh, work done by Kutan Schoner, uh, which work under Lagrangian uh, formulation and with uh, verti uh, ver ver uh, verticity. And for uh, Wu's formulation in 2D, uh, she uh, parameterized uh, the um, uh, free surface uh, with uh, Lagrangian variable, and uh, she uses then she uses the uh, real mapping to fix the domain. I mean to straight to to straighten the domain like this. I mean uh, she works on this half plane and she straightened uh, the, uh, the 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 survey, uh, the domain. Uh, into the R uh, R R two minus I mean the lower upper uh, l lower lower plane and uh, so uh, she rewrote the equation in um, equivalent form like this and here is uh, Taylor sign condition and of course uh, Taylor sign condition sometimes uh, uh, varies in different form but. Uh, of course, people always keep the main part, okay. And there is also a geometric formulation uh, by 
are loaded uh, by Jeff Gunther and uh, Shata and Jen. And in our works, uh, we use um, uh, geometric formulation by Shata and Jen. So I will introduce this later. Okay. And um, here is the definition for the uh, Dirichlet normal operator, and which has a, a different form uh, in different formulations. For example, in Davila's paper, uh, he used um, a G and uh, with the scaled, I mean, of the free surface function. Okay, zeta is a free surface function. So I'm sorry I didn't introduce because Domaza already introduced this formulation before. And zeta is a, a graph of the free surface, and psi is the velocity potential on the free surface. OK, so here's the definition of DN operator, or uh, just n acting on psi, and uh, with phi uh, satisfies satisfy this elliptic uh, system. So you can see that this DN operator is a global um, elliptic. I mean, we can prove it's a global elliptic operator, which is closely related to elliptic system. Uh, so it's a global one, and it turns out to be a, a order one elliptic uh, operator. And there are also many analyses on this operator. And I will omit the reference for, for, for a moment. And uh, here is a um, uh, many estimate, I mean, just involve elliptic system. So it's very important, I mean, to uh, deal with elliptic estimate. Of course, uh, with the case uh, of smooth domains and elliptic estimates are uh, already well developed. And of course, including the uh, Lipschitz domain, there are already uh, enough elliptic estimates of course, uh, which I will mention very soon. And so now it comes to our problem. I mean, we consider the fluid, I mean, or the water, uh, ideal fluid uh, on the domain like this. I mean, we only consider it two-dimensionally. And uh, with the free surface uh, intersects with the fixed bottom on a left and right. And sometimes we only uh, focus on one content point. But in this graph, I mean, when we prove the local apostis, we use this kind of bounded domains. So here is a fixed bottom and with two contact points. And it's only for a moment two dimensional. And of course, we have the gravity on the vertical uh, direction. OK, so it, I mean, it corresponds to the uh, shoreline problem uh, in real world. So it's an uh, interesting problem. And correspondingly, or mathematically, uh, we have an extra condition at the contact point. And we also have the uh, free, uh, surface tension here and the boundary condition for the pressure. And the condition and the content points is, I mean, uh, from the paper by Zhen and E. And uh, their, in their paper, I mean, it's a uh, computational um, and mo modeling paper. It's about how to uh, modeling the behavior of content points uh, there. And uh, so they, uh, provide, they provided um, condition. Uh, based on uh, Thomas Young's formula very long time ago for a stationary content angle. I mean, omega s is a stationary one, and uh, gamma 1 and gamma 2, uh, they are uh, coefficients, I mean. And beta c is also an effective friction coefficient from uh, physics. And so it relates to the material of the fluid and the solid uh, bottom. Uh, so uh, they modified this stationary uh, case. And so we have the velocity along the um, uh, bottom or in the uh, tangential 
direction of the bottom, the, the velocity and the contact point. So it's decided by the uh, stationary contact angle, or I say this um, coefficients minus the um, moving contact angle, I mean, sigma times uh, cosine omega. Omega is the moving contact angle. So it's a multiplication. And we use this uh, condition later uh, because of the surface tension we have on the free surface. So, I mean, I have to say that for the case, uh, I mean, by uh, De Barfeche, uh, he worked on the case without surface tension, uh, so there is no such uh, conditions needed. We need this because of the uh, mean curvature, okay? Because mean curvature, you see, it's a, a second order derivative of the free surface, and I will show you where we need it exactly uh, in the energy estimate. And before we going on, uh, before we go on, we need to recall some classical water wave uh, results. Of course, it's only for the local well posters. Uh, of course, global well posters included, and some uh, large, so-called la large uh, solution is also included. And for the local well posters, uh, the earlier work is only about the, uh, to prove the uh, local well posters for uh, small initial data. So there are some um, pioneer works. And um, then uh, Wu, she proved the uh, local well posters for uh, arbitrary large uh, data, of course, in sublet space. And uh, there are a lot of interesting and impressive works, uh, so I'm not going to read uh, everyone's name here, <laughs> so I just say, uh, for example, Crystal uh, No uh, and Nina Blunt, and Iguchi, and Ambrose, and Masmudi, and Davinan, and Azak Biuxi and Kudan Scholar, and Shatan Zhen, and Zhang, and Zhang. <laughs> so I stop here. So <laughs> for and, and, and so there are various kind of domains and various kind of formulations. I just mentioned before three main uh, formulations. And there is also a global local web, uh, global well posters result with more initial data, and of course it's done in sublet space. Uh, very famous works by them, and there is uh, also another. Um, uh, I, sh I should say, a uh, large uh, data solution, uh, which is called a Splash, and by um, uh, Castro, Cordoba, Feferman, et al. And um, there is another paper by them. And it's, very, it's also very interesting. It's uh, uh, in a large time interval. So when I say smooth, it's, um, I mean, the smooth about the boundary. So boundary is, I mean, there is no uh, colors and the boundary, that's, when, that, that's what I mean. And so for long smooth, mathematically, it's Lipschitz boundary. And especially uh, in our case with colors. Um, but there are not so many. Um, well post this result, of course, we only focus on local well post this result for a moment. And there are just uh, uh, a few uh, results here. Uh, first, uh, it's about crests or casts on the free surface. I mean, so uh, crest means there is a quarter, I mean, there exists a quarter point on the free surface, like this, for example. And that's also uh, Wu's case. She worked on this case uh, with a smaller angle than I drawed. 
Uh, but there is a very, I mean, a pioneer work by uh, uh, Isaac Bupiazuni. Of course, they just mentioned this case a little bit. They uh, mentioned a special case when the content angle is uh, pi over two with vertical wall. Of course, uh, here the reason I wrote it here, uh, the content angle case is just I want to say it's uh, very, I mean, pioneer work. Okay, so it's not the quest case. I'm sorry <laughs> for this. And for the quest case, I mean, uh, Wu and uh, Kinsey and Wu, uh, they did some um, work and they proved the local will post this for some rigid uh, quest angle and less than pi over two. And um, uh, she worked without gravity. And also the Taylor sign uh, vanishes and the crest point. So, I mean, the angle doesn't change in her work, in their, in, in their works. And they prove it in weighted space, I mean, weighted sublift space. And also, uh, there are works by Cordoba, Ansisu, and Grubik. And they have two papers about the uh, local posters, and it's in um, two uh, two dimensional uh, half plane like that, or uh, two dimensional bounded domain. For example, the here is the uh, quiz point here. And first they work with without uh, subtension and gravity, and then the end gravity, and of course the. Um, a Taylor sign also uh, vanishes at the crest point. And there are some, I mean, the, I mean, I mean, the, the I, I, I guess um, the starting point of, of their uh, research uh, is about the Stokes limit waves with fixed crest angles of, um, of uh, 2 pi over 3. And uh, there are also uh, some very great results uh, by the uh, by Amik and Tolan et al. Uh, working on the existence of Stokes limit waves, uh, which uh, belongs to uh, tra traveling wave, of course. So it's a different topic from here. Okay. And the second case is about contact points. Just uh, as I draw. I mean, before, so I will draw it here. Here is the fixed bottom, and we have free surface here. So there are contact points here and here. I mean, that's the contact point of the free surface. Uh, with the bottom, so it's different problem, and of course this will need to. I mean. Uh, different thing um, in the um, equation, I mean. So these two cases, they are different. And so there are some uh, related works. Uh, first, uh, De Brafeke, he proved an uh, upper hour estimate without sufficient and also with the assumption of small angles. And uh, there is a uh, floating object analysis uh, by David and his authors, uh, Metivier and Beck and et al. So I just only mentioned three of the papers. Uh, so working on the formulation of the floating object and also the modeling and some very interesting results there. And they also proved the local well posters for the green energy system. Uh, the, uh, they also assume that the angle uh, is small due to some restrictions. They prove the local well of, of, the, of the solution in this case. And uh, we, uh, we will start to work on this problem and since 2014 or 15. And we have first the singularities, uh, uh, I mean the estimates for estimates and analysis for the singularities uh, with the related ellip elliptic problems, and then we prove the a priori estimate and the local well postures for the problem with surface tension. And 
uh, a recent work, uh, we have um, we have improved the um, uh, range of the content angle, and we can prove the local web posters when the content angle is less than pi over two. And there is also a recent uh, re related work uh, by Agrawal and uh, Do uh, Doman Zach. Uh, by, uh, they, they work on some uh, analysis for the gene operator, some estimates. And there are also some other related works uh, for the um, a special con constant content angle, very uh, very early analysis, <laughs> and also for weak solution for some uh, for weak solution and the uh, existence and also the unique uh, uniqueness for the incompressible Euler equation in 2D convex domain and w with fixed boundary uh, by Bardos uh, et al. Uh, Bardos de Pli uh, Deeply Niu and Deman and Jihavahi and Lakav, uh, Lakav Mio and Wang. And I'm sorry, I, I, I can't uh, list all the references here. And there is also a, a upper hour estimate for Stokes flow and Lavis Stokes flow by Guo and Tais with contact angles. They also use some weighted worm. Okay, so now we look at uh, singularities. For example, uh, if we see, uh, I mean, we, we try to solve the elliptic uh, problem in a 2D cone, or I say s sector. Like this, infinite sector here, and it's uh, arranging point um, so you look at the right hand side I mean all zero data so it's very I mean so so the equation looks very good but it will have uh, some so-called singular solution like this I mean here the Omega is the uh, angle here of the sector. So the singularity function, I mean singular function is decided by the angle. I mean it's, it can be easily solved. I mean uh, when you use uh, uh, co uh, polar coding lates and <coughs> you use um, uh, Fourier transform and then, then you can solve it. Okay. Uh, so you can see here the content angle omega is here and uh, so when omega is smaller and you will have, I mean for fixed lambda, for example lambda one here, and uh, you, you, will, you will have smoother so-called singular function. Okay, so it's, I mean the regularity is decided by the uh, angle. And uh, for the uh, elliptic analysis uh, of, of, I mean, for, for 2D, 3D, or n-dimensional analysis, there are a, a lot of references. And um, for example, uh, Lopatinsky, Mazia, and Kondratiev, uh, uh, Olinik, and uh, Monique Dosh, uh, Pierre Givach, and Kostabel uh, Dosh. And there are so many works by them, so I mean the analysis is already well developed. And so here you can see that with smaller angle you have for a fixed solution here, you have better regularity. Okay, so in general the singular part, I mean the singular part of the solution for an elliptic system um, on corner domains is the summation like this with beta some kind of function near the angle and C lambda is a singular coefficient and uh, lambda is the um, eigenvalue, I can call the eigenvalue of this problem, eigenvalue. And phi lambda is some bounded sine or cosine function here and it's also, I mean the singular part is also called asymptotics because I mean the number of the expansion here is 
decided by the regularity you want. I mean, if you want uh, higher, if you need higher regularity, I see here, that's a singular part US. You want higher regularity, so you will have some more uh, bad uh, terms or some more singular terms. So it's decided by the regularity, the number of the singular terms. And UR is the regular part. And of course, it's also, uh, dep it also depends on the regularity you want. OK. So it depends on the problem you are focusing at. Anyway, uh, we have seen that when the content angle smaller, get gets smaller uh, for fix some for some fixed m and uh, uh, egg values gets larger, and so you will have um, more regularity for one fixed singular function like that. It's a fast way to look at this problem this uh, singularities in elliptic problem. OK, so what we did first is that uh, we, we, uh, we, we studied the um, uh, singularity decomposition. Of course, as I mentioned, it's already proved by uh, 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 Lopatinsky, Kondratiev, et al. Uh, but what we did is to, uh, get, to get the uh, coefficient dependence of the free surface. So I'm sorry, here, eta is, um, okay. Eta is a function of the free surface. So, so the key point is to prove the dependence of the free surface. That's uh, what we cannot find in the analysis uh, for the elliptic estimates. I mean, they maybe they don't care much about the coefficient dependence. So uh, we need to prove this. And, uh, and the decomposition, of course, is already classical one. And the key point here is the uh, estimate for the uh, singular coefficient here. I mean, for this one. So that's why I mark it red. OK, so uh, we need to spend some time to estimate the singular coefficient uh, and uh, with uh, extra singular term uh, because of the curved boundary. But anyway, it's just like some perturbations of the uh, vector, uh, sorry, sectors case. OK, so anyway, we, we proved the estimate uh, for <coughs> Uh, we, which we will use frequently uh, in our uh, Euler equations. And here is a um, smaller angle case, because we say that smaller angle needs to high regularity. So if you want this mixed boundary problem to be in HK plus two, and then you can constrain the angle, content angle to be like this. So smaller angle, uh, higher regularities, at least for elliptic system. Okay, solutions for elliptic system. Okay, that's um, uh, elliptic analysis part. And now we apply it a little bit and to show you how we use it. We consider the system, I mean for the velocity potential phi, and uh, we write it I mean, in a Lehman boundary condition system. Uh, so here is, uh, I need to explain the notation V perp here. It means um, N unit outward uh, normal vector in the product with V. And it's uh, taken on the free surface, I mean. Okay, so the normal component, outward normal component of the velocity. I mean, uh, so th th that's the uh, Lohmann boundary condition for phi, uh, for, 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 for phi, and we find it uh, when the content angle, I mean, here we have two content angles here for, for the bounded domain, 
And so when the content angles are less than pi over two, we have uh, the good news is that we have phi in H3, so which is already uh, a good news for us. And we will have the regular part, or I mean better part of phi in H4, and singular part in H3. And in fact, if you look closer, you can have some uh, regularity like uh, H3 plus regularity, in fact. Uh, so we have to count for the regularities for every component. And of course, uh, the velocity is a very important part here. So as a result, we have the velocity, uh, the, the decompos decomposition for the velocity to a regular a singular part here. And explicitly, we can write down the singular uh, decomposition as we showed before in a, for, a vec uh, for a sector's case. So we have uh, explicit, uh, uh, explicit decomposition here, and uh, here is CL, CR, uh, corresponding to the left and the right uh, singular coefficients here. And what's most important here is the range of the angles. It's, I mean, it's between, uh, it's less than pi over two, and singular, uh, the singular part only uh, shows and the, this range. And at this time, you can compute, uh, you can compute uh, directly that uh, uh, omega, uh, pi over omega lies in this interval. So we can have gradient V in L infinity. That's a very, also a very good news uh, when the content angles are less than pi over two. So it seems to be good enough already. Okay. So when the content angles are smaller than pi over uh, three, so the regularity is better. And maybe uh, some people will ask what happens uh, for the special case like pi over three or pi over two or pi over four. And in fact, um, these angles are, I mean, special angles. I didn't mention, I mean, I, I don't have time to mention when the angle And also for uh, pi over 2n is the same. Uh, these are special angles, and the regularity might uh, disappear with uh, some proper compatibility conditions. And if you consider uh, some higher order regularities, so they are special uh, angles. And I will omit this part. And so I will uh, take a look, and we will take a look at the upper <coughs> estimates, and I think we <coughs> have enough time for, uh, for us to reach the uh, technical part for the local web posters. Uh, so these results are done uh, several years ago, but I'd like to show you, uh, because they uh, look much simpler. Uh, okay, the local well post this part is too technical here. And so we look at the basic energy with one contact point. So, uh, uh, so I mean a domain like this. Okay, I will get back. Okay, uh, a domain like this, horizontally it's infinite and with only one contact point here, like this. So it's, I mean, it's bounded vertically. And we have the basic energy and the different part. I will omit this part, the, uh, the kinetic energy and the gravity potential and surface potential part. and. What's new is about this part. It's uh, potential uh, related to the dissipation of the content point. And so if you take DDT here, you will find a dissipation equation here. 
I mean, I, I mean, um, it happens. I mean, dissipation happens only at the contact point. And VC is uh, uh, tangential uh, velocity along the bottom and the contact point, and beta C is uh, some co coefficient I mentioned before. So I mean, with one contact point and with surface tension, uh, we have dissipation and the contact point. And I mean, this corresponds to the formulation by, um, uh, by Guo and Thais. Uh, they worked on the Stokes uh, formula, uh, the Stokes flow, and they also showed some similar uh, dissipation and the contact point as ours, but they have uh, viscosity, of course. So, I mean, the problem uh, looks in a good formulation. And if you, uh, I mean, if you look closer here, um, the velocity V, I mean, the, 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 kinet the kinematic energy and the gravity part and the surface potential part. So you can see that, uh, I mean, the energy depends on velocity and the position and the free surface. And what we do here, we follow uh, Chatel Jen's formulation, and I use, and I mean, we use the uh, formulation based on mean curvature. And recall that uh, the uh, pressure on the free surface is also uh, equal to the mean curvature with the coefficient. So that's the mean curvature on the free surface we use. Uh, and uh, here, uh, the quantity, I mean the good quantity J is greater than kappa H. H is the harmonic extension, I mean satisfy a corresponding a mixed boundary elliptic system and taking a gradient on the domain. So essentially it's a um, third order derivative of the free surface. And in this case, we can uh, represent our velocity in terms of the free surface because we have, I mean, uh, phi, uh, the, the velocity potential system for phi, and it relates to the LOMO component of V on the free surface, and by the kinematic condition on gamma T, or on the free surface, we know that the uh, LOMO component of velocity is almost uh, dT gamma T here. And I can write explicitly one version of the kinematic condition. So I, I, I will oh, okay. I I will use um, uh, David Lal's formulation uh, there and. I write the free surface graph as zeta, and sometimes I use it, I, I, I load it as eta. So I'm sorry about this notation. And so I only write in two dimensional case, so it's horizontally one dimension. Okay, so the kinematic condition on the free surface, so it's on gamma t. On the free surface, looks like this, I mean, in Zakharov's uh, formulation there. And so you can see the Loma component is related to the dt zeta or dt free surface directly. That's what I mean. So anyway, we can uh, represent uh, the velocity uh, by the time derivative of the free surface. And what happened about pressure? So here's the formulation by Chatel and Jen. Uh, the pressure can be decomposed uh, into two parts. The first part related to the mean curvature. Remember J, J here, maybe I should write J. gradient of kappa h. So 
it's a third order derivative of the free surface, essentially. And then the pressure, I can write directly for the pressure part, is equal to sigma uh, kappa h plus PVV, with PVV decided again by an elliptic system uh, of uh, V. Okay. So it depends on V again here, and V depends on dt gamma t. So they all depend on the, they all depend on the free surface. So we can uh, reformulate uh, the water wave system in a way like this. The equation for J. So it's I mean it's essentially ignoring the dt or this dt, and it just looks like I mean this and which is, I mean, very classical in the water waves problem with the fixed tension. And it, in fact, it looks exact, uh, exactly the same as the classical case. I mean, for the smooth boundary case, uh, it's, it, it's the same as the, free, uh, the, the, the smooth case. Okay, but of course there are differences because we have um, content points, so there is Firstly, the direct change um, uh, in the elliptic systems, okay. And, uh, and the operator A here is uh, associated to a gradient uh, harmonic ex extension and minus Laplace gamma t, which is the Beltrami Laplace operator on the free surface. So anyway, it's a third order operator, just an elliptic operator, which is good and it looks like this. And sigma is the um, surface tension coefficient. So remember, we are always dealing with the case with surface tension. So it's um, uh, second order time derivative. Uh, with respect to third order spatial derivatives, which means a uh, one time derivative is almost uh, 1.5 spatial derivative, which will lead to higher regularity for the free surface. I mean, that's the reason why we will have a um, smoother free surface, I mean, because of the surface tension, which, uh, I mean, coincides with the physical fact, of course. If you have surface tension, it is always better. I mean, you will smooth your surface. So about the upper hour estimate, so now we are uh, getting to the technical uh, part in the uh, last 10 minutes. I will finish and 12 on time, of course. I promise you. <laughs> So um, the lower order energy, of course, I mean, for the upper estimate, you can, o you, you can just consider only the lower order energy estimate. And for proving the local apostles, you have to consider some higher order energy. But we just see and see, see the lower order energy, which is more clear, I mean, without much uh, technical parts. And so it's... Uh, tangential derivative, I mean, on free surface, and the perp means the uh, normal component that, I mean, oh, okay, so just ignore it right now. And so it's one derivative on the surface and uh, dtj uh, in the domain, and also lower, uh, much lower, I mean, an energy for the free surface and the velocity, okay, that's the uh, basic energy part. and with the dissipation and the content point because we see that our uh, system is, dissipat is dissipating at the content point and so with the content angle here and uh, so one derivative at the uh, content point so it's a higher order term here and we managed to prove it the, to, to prove the upper estimate in 2017. Uh, it's, I mean, this upper estimate is posted on archive in 2017. And if you check uh, our papers, you will find it uh, published in 2020. So, so the angle, I mean, at that time, because we want uh, better regularities, okay, so you see here, 
the free surface in H4 and velocity, initial velocity in H3. Uh, so the counter angle is restricted uh, below pi over 6. And I, I can see that the most, uh, the, the most uh, the highest order uh, estimates come from the pressure part, PV part. And so it's the time for me to explain why we need the condition at the command point. So it's great, I still have time to explain. So look at the energy estimate from, I mean, for the equation. So that's the uh, uh, third order derivative part, I mean, the ellipt elliptic operator part. And here, sigma is the surface, uh, coefficient, uh, surface tension coefficient here. So we do the energy estimate multiply uh, with multiplying the equation with DTJ. So just take the DTJ as the material derivative. So, and we integrate on the domain omega. And then you will find by Green's formula. And notice that Green's formula, of course, it works in Lipschitz domains. So we can use it, of course. And so you uh, use uh, Green's formula and uh, you integrate, uh, you turn the, in uh, the integral uh, to the surface integral or the integral on the boundary. So there is uh, uh, Laplace gamma t appears, I mean. So this appears because of surface tension and then in order to deal with this higher order term we integrate by parts, which is easy to do. And then you will find some boundary terms because of the content point here. So I mean, you integrate on the free surface, there will be boundary conditions here first. Uh, of course, laterally, okay, you can easily see that. So in order to overcome this boundary term, which is a very high order term, because you see here, the energy is order one derivative of J on the free surface. And you see here, it's already order one. So it's a very high order term. So in order to um, get over with this term, in fact, it, it's a good term. I mean, containing dissipation there. So we show based on this condition and the quantum point I recorded here, so a record here, and so you can prove directly by some simple uh, computation. You see that it is equal to minus Ft. F is the uh, dissipation here. So there is a very good term here and with some lower order remainder terms. And that's the reason why we can finish the upper SMH with some dissipation term here. It comes from directly from the surface tension part uh, on the free surface and the integration by parts. So it's very interesting. And I still, I might have, I, maybe I have three or four minutes uh, to explain the local web process part. So in order to prove the local hypothesis, and uh, we want to prove it with some larger angles, we tried first uh, with much smaller angle, uh, much smaller than pi over six. I remember we proved firstly the local hypothesis uh, with the angle less than pi over 14. And then we improve it to pi over two uh, because we uh, use properly the singular decomposition from the elliptic system. And for example, you have very limited regularity. For example, the velocity is only in H2, but we just found several slides ago, and we have gradient V in L, L infinity, which is already good enough. And you can also find that the normal component of velocity on the boundary is also very good. So part of the velocity is good, I mean. And we, in order, but, but, but some term, I mean the most difficult term uh, arises uh, in the estimate, in the elliptic estimate for PVV. 
Uh, and in order to have some more regularity, uh, we modify the definition of PVV in the beginning. Uh, I mean, in our upper estimate, PVV is defined by a mixed uh, uh, by, by a mixed boundary condition uh, with PVV on gamma t vanishes. But now we modify it technically, so that's a technical part. But we only have two or three minutes, so you won't suffer too much about. That. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we modify the definition, and there, uh, and there will be the compatibility con condition or the equation for CVV, of course, and I omit this part. So uh, formally see that we will have uh, for sure PVV in H3 if the right-hand side uh, are good enough. And we will have the equation for CVV, of course, depending on V and the free surface, of course. So the pressure is modified uh, by a new kappa H. So kappa here is the mean curvature, remember that. And so the new K here is slightly modification here with respect to PVV here to satisfy the uh, boundary condition for P on the free surface. So with this uh, technical modification, uh, we, we write our equation, modify our equation uh, into a form like this. And it's a modified J, I mean a third order derivative of the free surface. You just need to remember that. And uh, we uh, have some, uh, I mean we have some detailed analysis for velocity and uh, uh, P, oh sorry. It, I mean, it wants to close, I mean, it wants, uh, it wants to end. So I will do that in one minute. Okay. okay, so here are some more details which I have to say sorry and you don't want to take a look at that. Anyway, to prove the local well post this, we have to fix the moving domain for the uh, iteration, I mean, because we have to iterate uh, the solution for the linear rise the system. So we have to fix it first and, and, and first. So we have a reference domain near uh, omega. Or I should say that we only need to fix it, okay, near the reference domain, gamma t star. Okay, anyway, we have uh, omega star for reference. And so the coordinates is built upon this reference uh, free surface. So the uh, gamma t is marked, I mean, is represented by um, close to normal direction vector mu. And uh, we can uh, I, I mean, we can represent our free surface by some function based on the direction, I mean, but based on the distance from this direction to the uh, reference uh, free surface. So that's what, uh, that's how we fix the uh, free surface. I mean, and we represent it uh, as a function d gamma t, okay. So it's fixed and uh, then we can uh, prove there are some uh, different morphism. Um, I mean, anyway, we have this different morphism, uh, morphism to fix the domain. Uh, so that's the detailed part. And so on the uh, free surface, the con normal component is uh, expressed like this. Okay, so more, uh, more details here. We have to add the lower order part of the free surface because if you want to uh, solve the free surface from kappa, you have to uh, place some lower order term like this. So anyway, we are able to solve it. And finally, uh, okay, okay, finally. F finally, we rewrite the system of modified mean curvature and the PVV and with boundary, I mean condition and the content points like this. Uh, so it's not a very good looking condition. <laughs> and also, of course, we need the condition 
second order time derivative uh, equation for the contact point itself. Okay, that's the position of the contact point. So anyway, we are able to solve it uh, in, uh, okay, the, the form is not very nice, so I have to say sorry again. Anyway, <laughs> the free surface is in H4, gamma C in H4. Okay, that's what we can see here, and the kinetic angle is uh, like this. Okay, and that's all for my talk. Thank you very much.